What's up guys? As someone who is constantly searching for a good scare, I'm happy to say that yes, it's time for six more horror movies that are actually scary. I put a lot of work into finding these movies instead of just regurgitating the same lists you see everywhere. So all the comments, recommendations, and even a little bit of sass mean a lot. Be sure to check out my previous volumes in the playlist below and subscribe and click the bell to support the channel. Let's get to it. I think there's some confusion about the rules of this video series, so let me clear it up. When I say horror films are actually scary, this means that a creepy 6 out of 10 will make the list, but a non-scary 9 out of 10 won't. But if you guys want a best horror video series, let me know. I say this because number 6 on my list, the Argentinian movie Aterrados, or Terrified, is kind of a mess. The plot is both convoluted and uninvolving. I found it harder to care about these characters than the Oscar voters trying to actually watch the films they nominate. Aterrados wastes no time with its first scare, which takes place in a shower and should be horrifying, but the acting from the husband ruins it. He looks bored with a real looking at the green screen Star Wars prequel kind of performance while his wife is getting tenderized. <sighs> so why is it on the list? Because Aterrados still manages to squeeze genuine terror out of its runtime. The tense moments are patient enough to get every hair on your neck standing at attention, and display how the simplest of scenarios can be disturbing if handled in the right way. The real winners though, the real winners are the more high energy set pieces. There's one scene, how would I describe it? it? It's like being chased by the L block from Tetris <laughs> that is so aggressively terrifying it feels almost like assault. Aterrados is the lowest movie score-wise on these lists so far, but it's worth checking out for the fear factor alone. If you want a jolt, give it a go. Next is a short film that made the rounds on some YouTube reaction videos, and that's Pleasant Inn. David Romero is my favorite short horror filmmaker working today. He has a great understanding of how animation can be used to instill all of our favorite horror emotions like loneliness, confusion, and panic. And Pleasant Inn is probably the best paced of his work. There's so much to enjoy right off the bat. There's an early scene that contains a wonderfully effective moment that will have you yelling at the screen, like, oh my god, don't, 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 don't do it, you idiot, like you would with the many, many, many stupid characters that exist in this genre. But then the plot sideswipes that, and at that moment I realized nothing was going to be cheap, and people, generally speaking, would act like people. I don't know, it was nice. Then there's the animation. Its sketch-like crudeness not only gives the short a unique look and fits the dingy motel setting, but works beautifully when the antagonist arrives. The introduction of the villain's true nature, let's call it, is legitimately shocking, and it only becomes more unsettling when you give more thought to things like purpose and anatomy. The lack of music, dialogue, and most ambient noise creates this weird off-kilter vibe and somehow makes the violence more upsetting because people can't voice their pain. It's kind of like the 8mm tapes in Sinister. It's such a short film, yet feels like a full meal. Number 4 is 2018's Mara. This one has pretty bad reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, although due to the recent controversy, the website's general rating system, and some suspiciously high scores in general, I hope we all stop putting stock in that pile of compost. But it is true, Mara's got problems. The introduction is corny, and the soundtrack sounds like stock music you find online. Thankfully, lead actress Olga Kurlinko holds the story together. But the reason it's on the list is that while The Exorcism of Emily Rose comes close, I think Mara is the best on-screen depiction of sleep paralysis. For those lucky enough to not know, sleep paralysis is when your body is asleep during its REM cycle, but your mind is awake. Many people experience hallucinations, such as an evil presence in the room. I've had this happen to me many times, and eerily enough, almost entirely in a specific apartment. <laughs> 
The movie is smart enough to make this the focus of its scares, and every one of these scenes is accurate, well shot, and very disturbing. The heavy nostril breaths, pressure on the chest, and the actress's performance do a great job selling this true-to-life waking nightmare. Similar to Nightmare on Elm Street, the fear of falling asleep is used as a plot device, and I like how tacked onto this is a ticking clock. Each time someone fell asleep, I started sweating. It's like the film had trained me, Pavlov's dog style. This is a fantastic horror movie hiding in a mediocre drama thriller. And these sequences are so well arranged and so damn scary, they hoist Mara onto the number four spot. Next is the short film Portrait of God by Dylan Clark. I've gotten some complaints about putting shorts on these lists, and I gotta say, if full-length movies were scarier, this wouldn't be a problem. I'm just as mad as you are. Plus, it's kind of admirable in a way. You know, like, it managed to scare me without wasting time. A lot of movies could be significantly improved by slicing and dicing its runtime, skin a rink Anyway, Portrait of the God is a lovely example of simple, stripped-down horror done right. One room, one character. Even the plot is basic. A student is practicing a presentation on a painting and the lore surrounding it. Slowly, she starts to realize that the morbid legends about this painting may be true. This short feels longer than it is, and this is a good thing. The slower pace means each new indication of something sinister arrives naturally, and the main character's transition from quizzical to terrified feels equally natural. And that's why it's so effective. If any of us were in her shoes, we'd be doomed from the start. The experience is one steadily escalating terror, and the big ramping up moment is done with so little fanfare, yet feels so epic. The film also looks great. The cinematography prevents the location from feeling stale, and I like how much space exists in certain shots, encouraging us to search the frame for something terrible. Portrait of the God is classy, atmospheric horror, and I'd say definitely give this one a watch. Also, when I ask you all to send me recommendations for future lists, feel free to send short ones. Even ones you made, like self-promote, go for it. Just as long as, you know, they're actually scary. It's the rules. Number two, and the last short film on my list, is Other Lily, again directed by David Romero. I love the fact that modern animation is playing with the idea of changing animation styles for scenes and characters. It can be funny and exciting, but can it also be scary? Turns out, yes, and Other Lily uses it to great effect here with its villain. The film also presents an interesting concept of time that not only adds to the uncomfortable, unsettled mood, but it gives you a lot to think about afterwards. Where Pleasant Inn used the lack of sound for its world, Other Lily zeroes in on specific sounds. Each violent act is visceral, the breathing is deep and fearful, and that has to be the most angry glass breaking I've ever heard. Time, animation, and even characters are loose and this combined with the scares themselves create a special kind of experience. I don't want to oversell this one since it is very short, but as a concentrated dose of horror, it got to me, man. Before we get to number one, here are some honorable mentions. Remember, these are movies that didn't scare me enough, but I still recommend. Altered States is sci-fi horror psychedelia. The short film Curve is tense and tactile. Don't Breathe uses sound to great effect, as I discussed in my Five Senses of Horror video. Nope has two scenes that left me shaken to this day. Teristas is awesome if you like watching dumb tourists get hunted. And The Omen has solid music, cool ideas, and the worst birthday surprise ever. Or the best if you are looking for an excuse to leave early.
And number one goes to a film from this year, and that's Talk To Me. Talk To Me isn't immaculate, but the movie has some fantastic performances. And these performances crank the dial on every scary sequence. I was not expecting the scenes with the hand to be as intense or disturbing as they are. It also helps that for a first feature, Talk To Me is super polished. There's some inventive sound design, professional cinematography and editing, and even opens with an impressive tracking shot. The climax of which might as well tap you on the shoulder and say, Hey, buddy, we are not playing around. The protagonist is a terrible person, but unlike Smile and No One Gets Out Alive, the film actually knows this and makes it work to the story's advantage. Also unlike those movies, Talk To Me doesn't rip off everything under the sun. It sports some original and terrifying ideas and shows them in original and terrifying ways. There's a bit where someone is caught in a spiritual limbo of some kind, and the way it's shown is so invasive and disturbing, I can't get the image out of my head. What a freaky and freakish movie this is. If you guys can take away anything from these years of covering horror, it's that the standards, the tropes, will only take fear so far. It's the creativity, the new, both in what's happening and how it's shown, that will always make the bigger impact and rob us that much more of a good night's sleep. Talk to me has that in spades. <laughs> he hates it when you touch him. You make him soft. That sums it up. What horror movies scared you? Let me know in the comments, subscribe and click the bell to support these videos, and enjoy the rest of the channel. I got some more videos coming soon, so stay tuned, and you guys, you guys are the best. Thanks for watching.